OK, in this section, we're going to be looking at binomial distribution. And I'm going to introduce binomial probabilities uh, via an example. So let's say I roll three fair six-sided dice numbered from one to six. And let x be the number of sixes that appear. Tabulate the probability distribution of x. OK, I want to see how, um, the, what the probability is of getting 0, 1, 2, or 3 sixes. So if we think about this as a probability tree, then this probability tree would have uh, three stages okay, for the three rolls of the dice. So we would either roll a 6 or not a 6. Or, well, in, and in the second stage, it would be 6 or not a 6. 6 and not a 6. And in the third stage, 6 or not a 6. 6 and not a 6. 6 and not a 6. And 6 and not a 6. OK? So, if we think about uh, all of the possibilities that I've got. So... In order for um, there to be no sixes whatsoever, I would have had to have had no sixes, no sixes, no sixes. OK? And what that would be, so the probability of that occurring, would be equal to, well, the probability of not getting a six is five sixths. And it would carry on through because each of the rolls of the dice would be independent of the next, okay? Uh, it's not dependent on what happened beforehand. So the probability will remain constant throughout. And so it will be 5 sixths uh, to the power of 3, okay? Now, um, there's only one route through. So I'm going to write it here as 5 sixths cubed. OK, and so 5 sixths cubed, um, cube that. So try that again. I was in the wrong mode. There we are. So 125 over 216. OK, so then if we think about if that's 0 sixes appearing, then if I'm then going to look at 1 six, well, if we think about how many ways that can happen, either I get one six and then two no sixes, so one there, or I don't get a six, then a six, then not a six, or I get two, uh, two uh, numbers that aren't sixes and then a final one that is a six. So you can see there are three routes through. So either six n n, n six n, or n n six. So What's the probability of these occurring? Well, um, in order for that to happen, okay, if we just look at 6nn, that would be 1 sixth times 5 sixths times 5 sixths. Okay? So that'd be 1 sixth times 5 sixths squared. So if I then look at not a 6, 6, not a 6, that's 5 sixths times 1 sixth times 5 sixths, which is the same thing as 1 sixth times 5 sixths squared. And then not, not, and then 6. So that would be 5 sixths times 5 sixths times 1 sixth, which is the same as 1 sixth times 5 sixths squared. OK, so the probability through is staying the same, but because it's happening three times, I've got to multiply that by 3. OK, so what, do we, what have we got here? So 5 sixths squared uh, times by 1 sixth uh, times by 3 is 25 over 72. OK, so how about now getting two sixes? Well, I could either have got a six, a six, and then not a six, or six, not a six, six, or not a six, six, six. OK, so looking through, 6, 6, not a 6. So it would be uh, 1 sixth times 1 sixth times 5 sixths. So 1 sixth squared 
times 5 sixths. Or I could have done 6, not a 6, 6, which is 1 sixth times 5, 6 times 1 sixth, which is the same as what I've got there. Or not a 6, 6, 6, which is 5, 6 times 1, 6 times 1, 6, which is the same there. And that's going to happen three different ways, OK? So three different ways there for that one. So I'm going to have 3 times 1 sixth squared times by 5 sixths, and that gets me 5 over 72. So then finally, I've got the probability of just getting three sixes in a row. So three sixes in a row will be 1 sixth times 1 sixth times 1 sixth. There's only one way that that can happen. OK, so 1 sixth cubed. So that's 1 over 216. So can you see where this has come from? OK, so if we start building up this picture a little bit more, I've left these gaps in here for a reason, because really what we've got here is this number of possible combinations is coming directly from NCR, it's coming directly from Pascal's triangle. So if you've looked at bi a binomial expansion already, then you should be very familiar with how this picture is building up. So Pascal's triangle here, 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. OK, we're looking at that row there. We can see the 1, 3, 3, 1. OK, we've got these 1 sixths cubed squared to the power of 1 to the power of 0. And we've got the 5 6 cubed, 5 6 squared, 5 6 to the 1 times 5 6 to the 0. Because the idea is that we wanted 3 6s to appear and we didn't want any no 6s to appear. So we actually have, this is where the binomial probability is really coming from, that binomial idea, because you've got either the probability of success, the one getting a six, or the probability of failure, so which is one take away one sixth. Okay? So you've got the two possible options. So the question asks us to tabulate the probability distribution of X. So using the same notation as what as what we've looked at with the discrete probability distributions and this is another case of one, okay, this is a specific type of discrete probability distribution. The x's that can t be taken on here are either 0 6's, 1 6, 2 6's, or 3 6's. So 0 6's was 125 over 216. Uh, 1 6 is 25 over 72. 2 6's is 5 over 72. And 3 sixes is 1 over 216. And we should find that those four probabilities add up to 1, as expected. So here is your first look in at how the binomial distribution comes about and how the binomial kind of setup that we've seen in binomial expansion can be fed into a probability question. And we're going to look at how we can develop this through the coming videos.